in its cloud recording right now. Um, so yeah, welcome to the kickoff. For folks that can, please help out uh, promote people from attendees to panelists. Uh, this is, of course, the call for the kickoff of 11.0. And I'm going to start by sharing my screen. Um, Josh at the end is going to tell us if this is the best release ever. So we'll, 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 we'll wait for that. And so in the discussion area, I'm really excited because we're doing a variety of things. Um, and on the ultimate end of the front, we're going to really close the loop and uh, make epics really complete um, and have all the features that you would expect from epics. And if you've been using epics right now, you see that they're very similar um, in nature to issues and merge requests. But you might be thinking, oh, why, why can't I do to-dos or, or search for you know, autocomplete and, and identify other issues um, and, and milestones and stuff like that in the comments and description. And so we're exactly closing that uh, gap um, in 11.1. And, um, and so we're going to do that. Let me, sorry. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm going to keep going. Sorry for the interrupt interruption there. And so um, we're, we're going to do that for epics. And one thing to note is that um, you can already get notifications for epics right now. So, uh, if people have been enjoying using that feature, that's great. I encourage more people to use epics, um, but we're going to add to-dos and autocomplete. So in addition to getting the email notifications uh, in, in your email inbox, you'll get the to-dos as well um, in your to-dos menu inside GitLab. Um, we've been pushing hard for Jira support inside um, GitLab and integrating with Jira because it's uh, a lot of our customers are using Jira, um, and they uh, have a lot of legacy systems with Jira. They, they enjoy using Jira, and, and uh, we want to support those users, those customers. Uh, there's a great feature inside Jira, the development panel, and we have a great support for that inside GitLab. So in the development panel, you can create a merge request, uh, a branch, and a lot of other features that integrate into the SCM tool, in our case, um, GitLab. Uh, but right now, subgroup support is not uh, supported there. So if you have subgroups inside GitLab, uh, the dev panel will not work. And so we're, we're correcting that exactly in 11.1. Uh, some weights and issue board column, this has been a stretch issue in the past, and we unfortunately can get to it. So we definitely want to set as a deliverable and, and have be able to see um, uh, of all the issues inside a issue board column or a list, you can see right now that there's five issues. There's a count for that. And but for those five issues, what is the combined weight of those five issues? You'll be able to see that inside an issue board list um, once we ship this feature. And what is I'm doubly excited about is that in 11.0, uh, in the release that's shipping in a couple of weeks, you're going to have assignee lists as well. So not only will you have assignee lists in 11.0, in 11.1, you're, you're going to be able to see for, you know, Victor has, assignee list has five issues assigned to Victor, and you're going to be able to see of those five issues, uh, the combined weight of, say, 23 is also assigned to Victor. So that's super, super helpful if you're doing any type of project management. And um, so, so that's a starter feature because weight is a starter feature. The rest of these features are, are core features, which are uh, things like filter discussion um, by comments, um, or uh, by comments, or activity, and issues, and merge requests, um, filter by um, work in progress merge requests. A community member started this, and we're wrapping it up, so I'm really excited about that. Showing information in pipeline section design. We, we have this feature in GitLab. But uh, our, as our widget becomes increasingly powerful inside GitLab, uh, we want to improve the design and make this uh, super awesome. So we're going to work on that uh, in this iteration. Uh, similar to uh, usable milestone list pages, again, uh, improved design. And finally, uh, batch commenting. We, we really wanted to do this for a couple of iterations now, and we've been blocked um, by a, a, a significant view refactor um, that, that's going to come in also in 11.1. And that's going to improve a lot of performance. but um, uh, very importantly, it's going to unblock us to be able to do uh, batch commenting. So, so really excited um, that we can we can work on that in eleven one and ship that, and that that's going to be a premium feature. Uh, Fabio, Fabio, tell us more about CI/CD and security. Yeah, thank you, Victor. Always a lot of issues <laughs> for for discussion. That that's awesome all the time. Uh, and I don't think that it's too hard to figure out this is the best release ever, as Joshua said. Uh, so let's start with CI/CD 11.1. So first of all, we are moving on a very new design for uh, the environments view. We are envisioning this uh, pipeline way to understand environments because you have environments, but they are normally related with each other, and you want to promote uh, your deployments, uh, for example, from staging to production. In order to do that, uh, 
it's very helpful that you can know exactly which is the status on staging, which is the actual status on production, but also which are the differences between staging and production. So you know exactly what you're adding to your production environment uh, as soon as uh, you are promoting it. So this first iteration uh, is uh, adding a tab uh, in the environment's view in order to give users the ability to know uh, about their environment in this new approach that we are uh, validating. Uh, this will be improved uh, in the future, and so uh, you will uh, see information like environment name, you have links uh, to jump uh, into the real uh, deployment, so a URL you can reach with your browser, but we also want to, sh to show the merge requests uh, that are in one particular environment, but they are not in the next one. So you can exactly spot the differences and you know which are the features that are going to add in the new one. We are also uh, working with a, a community contributor that obviously, thank you for that, uh, to uh, an interactive web terminal for CICD jobs. This is very, very uh, interesting and allows you to jump in the job while the job uh, is being executed by the runner. This is very awesome if you want to debug or if you want to do uh, a post failure analysis of the environment. Normally, you are working with a Kubernetes uh, executor or with a Docker executor. It means that uh, at the end of the job, uh, the virtual environment, the, the disposable environment is trashed away and you have no way to access logs, to access information, to perform more analysis. You just have to rely on uh, the output log that you can see in GitLab. But with this new feature, you will have an interactive session uh, with, uh, with, the, with the runner and with the, your job. Uh, this has a lot of uh, different uh, uh, implications. It can be used in very different ways. And we are very happy that uh, this could be leveraged in the near future by the platform team uh, in the web IDE. So it's something that we want to build. It already has a, a very specific target, but also the generic target is very, very cool. And we are also implementing a, a way to stop uh, environments manually. In the perfect flow, your environments uh, will always be automatically stopped. For example, when you merge a merge request uh, and the review app uh, will be automatically uh, shut down and cleaned up. But sometimes you just have environments uh, that are not uh, closed, they are not cleaned up, and they are wasting resources. They are uh, just showing in the list, uh, creating garbage that you want to avoid. So we want just to provide a very simple way to click on a button and to trash away your environment that you don't need anymore. And that's it for CI/CD uh, in 11.1. Let's talk about mm, security products features in 11.1. The first very important thing we want to work on is uh, the security dashboard. This is the first step uh, in uh, our you know, in our uh, intent to support the security teams and security people as a first class entity in GitLab. So if you are part of a security team, uh, more than uh, the repository code, uh, you probably want to have a security overview on the project that you are caring about. And this is exactly the place where you want to land. Security dashboard in this first iteration will present you the list of projects that you want to keep uh, under monitoring with a very brief uh, overview of the security status coming from the reports that uh, you can also access in the merge request widget or at the pipeline level. Uh, from there, obviously, you are allowed to jump in specific projects and to see more details if you are interested in. This is also intended to be an option that users can set as their default home page when they log in into GitLab. So now you have uh, a few options, mainly for developers. You can have uh, your repository or the list of projects. Uh, these kind of things that are very cool for developers, but could be not optimal for security folks. They will be able to set the security dashboard as such. Uh, another very cool feature that we want to implement in 11.1 is uh, a second iteration on the license management story. So in 11.0, you are able to see the licenses that are uh, in your project because of dependencies of other tools that you are using inside your project. With this new iteration, you will be able to mark uh, the licenses that you accept uh, as part of your project or that you don't want to allow. This means that if your project is uh, open source 
and is using a license that you don't want to allow because it breaks the open source idea you have for your project to re redistribute it, you can uh, just uh, disallow it, blacklist it, and uh, you will see when you create a merge request uh, adding this new license that you don't want uh, that there is a problem, so you can take action. Also, you can just say, no, this license is good to me, mark it at green, uh, and so this license will not be considered as a possible problem in the future because you already allowed it. Uh, then we also uh, continuously uh, add the new, new, new functionalities, or continuing functionalities, what we already have for uh, container scanning and DAST and SAST. So you can find in the list uh, a few issues uh, that will uh, close the loop with the existing features that were not implemented for container scanning and DAST. In this specific case, we are working uh, to show the reports, the security reports for container scanning and for DAST uh, at a pipeline level. We already have in the merge request widget, but you want also people to access them at the pipeline level. Uh, the last point is about uh, a new support for uh, SAST uh, for Node.js projects. We are still evaluating tools and as usual, we are using uh, the best tools available on the market that are also open source, and people will just have uh, to run uh, jobs as usual. They will be automatically detected as Node.js projects, and the correct tool will be run, and the reports will be available. And that's all for security products. And now, big announcement from starting from uh, 11.1, but they are still uh, they are already working. Uh, uh, there is a new team in GitLab that is the configuration team that is taking over the, the job about uh, Kubernetes and Auto DevOps. So, Daniel, what about uh, your planning? Thank you, Fabio. Um, so, we have some exciting additions in the configuration area, uh, and uh, we'll start with support for Kubernetes uh, RBAC for GitLab managed apps. So now that RBAC has been made generally available in Kubernetes, we're going to support it and implement it as the default authorization method for cluster security. Um, so we recognize the importance of security in the context of deploying applications to our clusters. And uh, we want to ensure that we are securing applications properly. Um, so um, additionally, RBAC is now enabled by default in platforms such as uh, Google's GKE and uh, Amazon's EKS. So it go further to that as well. So this means that when you create a cluster in uh, the Kubernetes area of GitLab on their operations, RBAC will be um, enabled by default. And uh, then when you deployed an application via GitLab, say uh, Prometheus or JupyterHub, uh, RBAC role creation will be automatically handled based on the Helm chart settings for those apps. Um, so we're very um, excited to bring our RBAC into our Kubernetes integration. Um, Let's see, move, moving on, the next thing I wanted to talk about is protected environments. Um, so we re recognize the uh, importance that operators play in the entire DevOps lifecycle. Uh, deploying applications to a production environment is always a sensitive task, uh, especially in highly regulated environments where separation of duties kind of is higher taxed. Um, so we recognize um, operators as first class citizens at GitLab and, we, and to, to that end, the protected environments feature will allow you to determine which role a uh, user or group will be able to execute a, a deployment uh, into a given environment. Um, at the same time, uh, users will be able to determine which environments are protected. Uh, so kind of the same pattern that we use for protected branches. Uh, so from here, uh, kind of from this first point, we want to um, iterate and continue adding features that will bring more value to operators. and. Uh, basically bring them more value into their day, day to day. Um, and that's all I have for configuration. Uh, Jeremy, on to you with platform. Thanks, Daniel. I'll actually uh, take platform first. Um, we've got a, a number of exciting improvements uh, planned for the platform team. Um, and the first I'd like to share with you is the ability to create a readme when you create a project. Um, this is a really simple, uh, straightforward feature. But um, it's, it's really helpful uh, for the obvious reason of uh, normally the first thing you do is create a readme. But there's also a bunch of use cases where um, being able to do this is incredibly helpful. Um, some organizations uh, really restrict who's allowed to create a project. 
Um, and so there's a, there's a couple of blessed people who create the project, but then if it's completely empty, there's no default branch, there's no master branch. So nothing can be pushed to the project um, because by default in those environments, the master branch is protected. So currently though they have to push the master branch, put a readme in manually. Um, and so that's a bit of a choke point in these organizations that follow these quite restricted workflows. By adding this checkbox, we uh, solve that usability problem for those organizations and make GitLab better for everyone else who just uh, uses it um, to create their projects normally. Um, the next set of improvements I'd like to share is to do with the web IDE. So the web IDE has been getting better and better every release. Um, in 11.0, we've got some really great improvements to allow you to switch between merge requests um, and view pipeline traces and pipeline statuses. But one, one improvement um, that we're gonna be working on 11.1 that's gonna make it even better is the ability to view the merge request description uh, when you open a merge request in the web IDE. And this is gonna be really useful for those who are using the web IDE for code reviews because they'll then see the description of what the merge request is doing side by side the code changes. Um, and it'll also help developers who like to use the workflow of opening the merge request before they start developing, write a description of how they're gonna break it down and attack the problem practically, and then use that as sort of a reference document beside the code as they write it. So that's gonna be incredibly useful for those kind of workflows. One thing that's maybe not working so well in the web ID right now is that um, the improvements we made to support file staging um, and committing has made the committing workflow more complicated. Um, and so we're looking to address a number of usability um, concerns and pieces of feedback to make the staging workflow cleaner, make sure that um, there's feedback about the information that needs to be supplied and making sure that it's really easy to commit your changes. We really don't want users getting stuck with changes that they want to commit, but they just don't know how. Um, so we've got uh, two issues linked there and a bunch more um, UX refinements to really improve that committing workflow. And we're really excited to see how that um, will make a difference. Next up, we're working on um, project exports and storing the project exports in object storage. One of the really great features we have in GitLab is the ability to export the entire project, not just the repository, but all the issues, the merge requests, the snippets, the wiki, everything in your project gets exported in this nice little tarball that you can um, use for backup purposes or for migrating your project to another instance. Um, and so the way that feature works is that you request the, the tarball to be prepared and then you get an email when it's ready. But during that period, while, you can, while you're waiting and the 24 hours following when the link is ready, that tarball is being stored on the um, GitLab's disk, which isn't great if you're trying to run GitLab in a cloud native environment. Um, and if your instance is getting a lot of project exports on a regular basis, it can really consume a lot of storage. Um, so we're adding support so that those uh, tarballs will be stored in object storage. Um, which will unblock um, some important parts of the cloud native project that we're working on. And finally, also related to project export, um, we've been noticing uh, some increased error rates on gitlab.com with project exports, and we've got a range of bug reports. And so we're investigating um, and hoping to resolve a significant number of the most common project export import bugs um, related to the GitLab project export. Um, and continue to improve that feature um, because it is so useful for so many different workflows. Um, with that, I'll uh, hand over to Andreas to talk about uh, some SSH improvements. Thanks, James. I'm really excited about bringing in more of GitLab into our web ID experience. So looking forward to those changes. So we know um, from our search information that we have that um, SSH currently is um, actually number one of our search terms within our GitLab documentation and has been since quite some time. So apparently, um, this is not an intuitive thing to do. And because of that, um, our awesome UX research team actually conducted a great user study to, on the one side, learn about where our users actually struggle on that topic and actually identify small improvements that we will make uh, that just make this configuration um, easier. So the outcome of this research uh, study you can find in the linked epic. So this is partly documentation related, partly front end, so small changes, but we plan to ship all of them in the upcoming 11.1 release. So at GitLab, we actually believe that everyone con can contribute and people should be able to really push to a repository on GitLab with as little as overhead as possible. So I'm really confident, although that sounds quite small, 
that this is a big improvement to make this experience and our goal towards that a lot easier. So that's that. Next on platform is Jeremy. Thanks a lot, Andreas. Uh, it's super great to hear us using uh, UX research in a transparent way to continue to improve things for our users. Uh, it's really exciting stuff. Um, and James, super exciting to hear more about Web IE continuing to improve. It's something I use constantly, and it's so much fun, like when you're watching it slowly, slowly iterate and improve over time. So I'd like to talk about the last final two platform rows, both of which I'm, I'm really, really excited about. So the, first, the second to last row uh, is about making personal access tokens better and more secure. So these tokens are generally used for application or script development when you need external access to get to the GitLab API as a particular user. However, like when you actually create a new API private token on your user, it grants it full access to the API as your user, including destructive permissions for all the users, groups, and projects. So this makes managing the blast radius of these particular tokens like really, really challenging. And so we'd like to take the first step towards solving this problem by introducing project level scoping for personal access tokens in 11.1. So when you create a new token in 11.1, you'll actually be able to restrict full API access to a particular project. Um, this is great for groups and organizations in GitLab with hundreds and hundreds of projects where it just doesn't make sense for like one really super powerful token to have read write permissions for every project on the instance, uh, especially for more secure industries and environments. So this is just the start and we'll do more and more with scoping in the future. And our goal is really to make sure that like you're granting just the amount, right amount of access to these tokens as makes sense for your, for your user, your organization. So I'm super excited for this. This is a problem I'm really excited to solve. And lastly, we're really designing the contribution analytics page. So we've actually got some really cool analytics features in GitLab, and this is definitely one of them. Um, at the starter level and above, we actually give your groups an analytics page that helps you visualize pushes, merge requests, and issue activity over a period of time. Um, so you can see like, uh, like who in, your, in that particular group is contributing the most frequently. Um, and we've redesigned this page actually to be able to better support presenting many, many contributors, made the page much more visually attractive and useful. So we've actually got lots planned for analytics in GitLab. It's a big area of opportunity for us that we really see help us helping users manage their instance activity kind of at a glance. So please stay tuned for that, lots more planned, but uh, I'll leave it there for now. And Andreas, I'll hand it back to you uh, for more for Geo. Thanks, Jeremy. Awesome improvements there. So talking to you, um, we typically, as always, are continuously working on improving the experience and performance within the GEO team. Um, two things I really want to highlight uh, for the 11.1 release, starting with the first one, which is actually quite a big one. Um, with 11.0, so the release that is upcoming next few weeks, we actually ship automatic redirects. So on git fetch uh, and git push um, writes, you actually get automatic proxies to primary geo instances. So super cool addition that we have for HTTP with SSH following um, in one of the next releases. Unfortunately, in the upcoming release, um, redirects do not support Git LFS. And this is actually to your bug on the um, Git LFS side of things. And what we're going to do in the 11.1 release is actually going to add support um, for HTTP requests um, on LFS. So what we did for that, um, and that's ongoing, we actually collaborate with the Git LFS maintainers um, at GitHub. So two weeks ago, we filed a um, issue on their side of things. And within no time, they not only analyzed and fixed that, but also already shipped um, the release that actually contains these improvements. So um, that's really awesome to see. And the second part is a small UI improvement that I actually think makes a lot of sense. So whenever you navigate um, on the GitLab UI of secondary geo nodes, you just get the information that this instance is read only and a small link that forwards you to the primary um, GitLab instance. While this is helpful, it does not really um, forward you to the actual page where you're currently on. So what we want to do is just put in links that forward you to the direct page, um, similar to where you are looking at currently on the secondary, which is read only, to see the same information where you actually are allowed to add an added information on the primary uh, geo node that is related to your secondary. So small change, but I think it helps a lot with um, working on geo scenarios within our GitLab UI. And with that, I'm happy to hand over to Josh with monitoring. Yep. Uh, thanks, Andreas. Uh, that's all really exciting stuff. Uh, can't wait for, for the geo improvements uh, and 
uh, of course, all, all the platform features as well. It's all really exciting. Uh, on the monitoring side, uh, we have some uh, similarly exciting features. Um, we just missed uh, a delivering uh, our SLI alerts in 11.0, and so we'll go ahead and be finishing it up and get it out the door here in 11.1. Um, this is a great way for users to easily go ahead and add alerts uh, to any metric they have, whether it's ones that we automatically detect or also alerts that uh, users have added themselves. Maybe it's a business uh, metric they want to care about, like uh, cart sizes and things like that. You know, it doesn't matter. You can uh, set alerts on error rates and things like that and get those delivered to you in email. So that will be a really great way to close the loop and get notifications uh, with the monitoring service that we have here in GitLab. Um, we're also building on top of another feature that we delivered in 11.0, which will be coming soon, is we added the operations tab. And right now there is the environments and the Kubernetes uh, uh, workflows within that tab. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and build on top of that start with 11.1 with the addition of metrics and also logging options. And so we're really building out a great home for all the operations related features and having all these things uh, promoted uh, from, in the case of metrics uh, being underneath environments uh, and logs being attached to deploy boards and really moving those front ends that are making them easier to access and also uh, increasing discoverability and usability of these features. Um, so really exciting features there as well. And there's a couple of uh, kind of associated issues to do a couple of things to the workflows to make that work and make that sensible. Um, we're also going to go ahead and uh, try to deliver on the first iteration of our trace integration with Jaeger. Um, and so this is, again, just the, the very, very beginning where we'll add the option to uh, essentially uh, proxy through to, to Jaeger in a cluster um, with the GitLab authentication applied uh, since Jaeger itself does not provide authentication um, and could potentially contain some sensitive information. Um, and then also uh, again, um, uh, render the UI uh, in a new tab. And so essentially you would see a, a tracing option in that operations uh, drop down there or sidebar. Clicking on it would again just seamlessly take you through uh, to Jaeger. Um, but again, we'd be doing the proxying for you and the authentication for you to make it easy to interact with where it might not be if it's again residing in the Kubernetes cluster and you're you know, on your PC at home, for example. So some very exciting features there for, for monitoring. Um, we also have some uh, really important features coming for the distribution team as well. Um, and one which we've been talking about for a number of releases here uh, is that um, we're really making some great progress on the cloud native Helm chart. Uh, this is a, a, a really a great way to deploy GitLab on Kubernetes and the various uh, variants of, uh, of Kubernetes, whether it's you know, EKS or GKE or uh, vanilla. Um, and we've gone ahead and again made a new chart and we've also uh, split out the containers into uh, five major services. And this will make it easier to scale them, make it easier to make them redundant. And also critically, we've removed the need for NFS. Uh, and so this way they're easier to scale and run and operate in a highly available fashion on Kubernetes without some of the kind of uh, uh, perhaps uh, not very cloud friendly infrastructure requirements like NFS. And so again, that's just some of the highlights there. Uh, we're gonna be in beta here at Lumbado and we're on a journey to going to GA here uh, with 11.1 uh, uh, coming up. So again, some very exciting progress there and uh, give them a try. Uh, it, it's a really great way to deploy GitLab. Um, we're also making improvements uh, onto uh, the Raspberry Pi packages. Um, so right now, uh, uh, this is actually a pretty popular way to deploy GitLab uh, uh, for uh, from smaller instances. And uh, right now we have Jesse packages, uh, but unfortunately Jesse is really kind of no longer available uh, easily for, for the Raspberry systems. If you go to like Noobs, for example, or Raspberry, um, you're gonna see Stretch. And so you wanna make sure you have a package available for Stretch to make it easy to, to go ahead and install GitLab on Raspberry Pi. Since again, um, this, this is a fairly popular way to go ahead and run GitLab. Um, so I work working on that here at one. And similarly, we're also doing some internal work here, um, also for folks who are perhaps using source uh, to improve the build caching and package speedup times uh, for compiling packages. Right now it can take like 30 minutes and we've estimated the cost for ourselves at like a one or two euros. Um, and that can be problematic for the developer workflow. It reduces how often, you know, you can iterate as a developer if you want to get a package and try it out. Um, and also of course, um, having some costs attached to it, um, uh, make it harder for, for us to 
had this enabled by default automatically in more pipelines. And so um, by being able to improve this up, will hopefully allow developers to have uh, more access to packages, more quickly test their features, um, and also, uh, again, allow us to unlock additional package building, additional workflows. For example, right now it's a manual option uh, uh, in the, in the, in the uh, pipelines for our GitLab CE and GitLab EE uh, pipelines. Um, so that's the exciting work we have here for distribution uh, as well. Uh, I think, you know, overall, you know, again, 11.0 was a pretty exciting release. It's a major release. Uh, and I think most people thought we'd have a really hard time topping that one. Uh, but with all the amazing features here in 11.1, uh, from the core features with some key UX improvements, uh, we have you know, that amazing pipeline view in CE, We've got great improvements to web ID. I use it all the time, I love it, and it's just getting better and better. Uh, and of course, also, we got the RBAC features coming in for Kubernetes, which will be huge. Uh, and then of course, we have, uh, in the premium side, batch comments, which is amazing by itself. Um, I know my email box tends to fill up rapidly uh, and, and when someone's doing a review. Uh, so that'll be fantastic to have. And then, of course, the, on the ultimate side, some really great features here with alerting, the security dashboard, security enhancements, uh, and you know, all summed together, this is an amazing release across all the tiers, um, and we can't wait for this to be available. And I think, of course, it really is going to be the best release of GitLab ever. So thanks, everyone, for attending, and we look forward to seeing you on the next release.